So in Justice 2, issue 17, I'll be honest with you guys, I actually put off reading this series for a long while now. I don't really have a good excuse for it. I guess it's just because comic books based off of video games usually tend to be kind of poor, especially uh, comic books based off of fighting video games. Even though uh, Mortal Kombat X so far has been pretty good. I'm only like four issues in though. But yeah, I decided to uh, give this issue a chance, mostly because I thought it would be kind of poetic to read the uh, comic issues based off the video game that got me back into comics in the first place, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Basically, for anyone who's seen the the Flash video, you'll know what I'm talking about. For those who haven't, Justice 2 is actually what got me back into comic books. So yeah, I decided to uh, check it out to kind of briefly go over the story so far. Basically, Superman went evil, killed a bunch of people, killed some uh, heroes, some villains, uh, ended up getting imprisoned. Uh, and that's uh, that, all, that all happened in uh, Injustice 1. And then Injustice 2, he's still in prison. And Batman basically wants to put a team together to rebuild the world back the way it used to be. Meanwhile, there's a Batman impersonator who we have no idea who his identity is yet. Though I am, uh, I'm guessing it's Jason Todd. Um, just because of the fact that, uh, I mean, it's Batman with guns and... He attacked Batman in the previous issue with this um, like chest blast that uh, Jason Todd uses in the Red Hood comics. So I'm assuming it's him, uh, but we don't know for sure. It could be anyone. could be a clone of Batman. could be Batman from another universe. Uh, they could totally pull a crazy on us and have it be uh, Thomas Wayne from Flashpoint, though I highly doubt it is. But yeah, basically there's this uh, Batman impersonator who's gathering his own group of heroes and villains under the leadership of Ra's al Ghul who wants to reshape the world in his image basically and that requires committing genocide on a shit ton of people. So obviously Batman doesn't want any of that. The real Batman in any case. So just in the previous issue we had uh, Green Arrow and Black Canary about to get married when their kid gets kidnapped along with the kids of uh, Black Lightning. Meanwhile, Damien has desecrated Alfred's uh, gravesite, dug up his body, and put him in the Lazarus pit. And Alfred has, is basically alive, but he's like mummified. Like he's really, he looks like a zombie, basically. Blue Beetle is dead. Or should I say, uh, Ted Cord is dead. Uh, Jamie Rays is still alive. So uh, Ted Cord was killed off, and it was kill he was killed off in a pretty dramatic way fashion it actually made me kind of sad and i'm not even all that familiar with blue beetle i never really read uh the series as a kid which kind of goes to show that this yeah the series uh speaking of drama this series is really really fucking good i mean the drama is dramatic as hell but there's enough comedy so it doesn't feel like there's enough comedy in this so it's not emotionally draining like especially with the uh appearance of plastic man who is amazing him and his son are like my my favorite characters in this series they are so awesome i have no knowledge of plastic man i never read any of his stuff but if he is anything like he is in injustice 2 i am definitely going to go check out that series uh i'm definitely going to try to see if i can find some plastic man stuff the series is so good like like i said the, the comedy meshes well with the drama and it has good action scenes characters are really well written it does a really good job of um bringing you into the story and the characters. Like I mentioned it in previous videos, but I've been out of the comic book hobby for 20 years, pretty much. Uh, so there's a lot of characters who I have either A, never seen before, or B, I haven't seen them in a long, long time. But this series does a really good job of introducing everybody and um, showing their characters or personalities, what makes them tick, giving them, uh, basically everyone gets a, uh, a chance to shine, which is really, really good. So yeah, um, to go back to what the story uh, so far. So Black Canary, Green Arrow, and Black Lightning's kids have been kidnapped and taken to South America, where, where uh, Ra's al Ghul, uh, Batman Impersonator, and these other group of superheroes and villains have them hostage. But Batman had put a tracking chip on uh, Connor, who is a... Uh, Green Arrow and Black Canary's son. So he knows where they're at. So Barbara, uh, Batgirl, who's actually the leader of this this group. And for anyone who's been put off by um, the recent series of Batgirl and all the girl power, uh, you know, Marvel-like bullshit that has been going on, pick up the series. It's 
series is really good with Batgirl. Like, I am loving her character so far. She is amazing. She is badass. But anyway, she's the leader of this new... Uh, they don't call themselves the Justice League, but basically Justice League. Basically, the plan is for them to fly at the edge of space. They're going to do a jump where uh, Batgirl is basically going to jump out of the plane with uh, Plastic Man and his son, Luke, wrapped around her so that they can get into the uh, base without any kind of radar or satellites picking them up. So um, you're not going to be able to see it because I've uh, been erasing the dialogues for all the panels that I'm showing. But the dialogues between these characters are really good. Like They really play off each other well. I am like really surprised at the writing of the series. The series is so freaking good. Who's the writer? Tom Taylor. Okay. I am definitely going to have to check out some of his other stuff, see if they're any good. Because so far, this this series is... like I am blown away by how amazing this series has been. And I came in with very low expectations. So yeah, basically, we have Batgirl dropping in. And with the help of Plastic Man and his son, they make a safe landing. And they discover the entrance to uh, the underground base. So we have Luke, uh, Plastic Man's son. He takes out some of the ninja guards and Plastic Man finishes the rest off. And we get this nice piece of dialogue where uh, Plastic Man notices his son is smiling. And he's like, you know, like, why, why are you smiling? And uh, his son's like, well, you know, this is nice. And Plastic Man's like, knocking ninjas unconscious and sneaking into an underground lair of murderous supervillains is nice. And his son's like, no, no, it's not that. It's just this is like the closest that we've gotten to throwing a ball in the yard. So like this is like the the closest like father son moment that these two have ever had. So then Plastic Man, being the absolute badass that he is, goes, "Come on, son, let's go father son bond the absolute hell out of this hive of evil," and that's where the series ends. <laughs> oh, this this series is so good. I am kicking myself for not jumping in on this earlier. If anyone is like on the fence about it, I highly recommend picking it up. The characters are really good. There are some moments that are kind of um, hypocritical, I guess would be the word to use. So we have Damien just being an entitled asshole. But I mean, what else is new? I'll be honest. Does anyone really like Damien? Damien? I can't stand him. I absolutely hate his character. I've seen like other things that he's been in. And I have yet to see anything with him in it that I like. Even Super Sons, I can't stand Damien. I just, I hate his character so much. I, I really want them to pull a Jason Todd on Damien. Only, unlike Jason Todd, don't have him come back. Just have Joker beat the shit out of him with a crowbar, blow him up, and that's the last we see of Damien. No more, no returns, no nothing. Just get him out of this. He is garbage. He is so bad. Like, we have Damien just basically like telling Batman, like, Alfred was always there for us, but all you treated him was like a servant rather than a family member. It's like, go fuck yourself, Damien. Just earlier in the uh, series, we saw um, Alfred doing all of your chores rather than you doing them yourselves. If anyone was treating Alfred like a servant, it was you. And then we have, um, like, we have uh, this cool moment earlier in one of the uh, previous uh, issues where Roz is basically threatening Harley's daughter. And Harley, like, all humor drops and Harley just goes super serious mode. And she basically uh, tells him, you're not going to kill, uh, you know, you're not going to kill my daughter. Some of these guys in your groups are heroes and they're willing to listen to you now. But if you go and kill my daughter, they're not going to listen to you anymore. And I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Except immediately afterwards, Roz is talking about how he wants to commit genocide. So are these heroes that are working for Roz Ar Ghul will have a problem if Roz kills Harley's daughter. But they won't have a problem with Roz committing genocide. That doesn't make any sense. So we have like moments where heroes are trying to justify working for Roz. But none of it makes any sense. Because it's like your Roz has come out straight up and said we're going to commit genocide. We're going to basically wipe out as many humans as we can. And I mean this is not like something that he's like hiding or, what, or plotting behind everyone else's back. Like the whole team knows what he's going to do. And they're still willing to work for him. Yet they call out like Batman some of the other superheroes on, on some of the stuff they did. It's like that's kind of bullshit. I could even have like one scene uh, where Superman was breaking out of his prison when Batman had a contingency. Basically, um, Adam shrunk down, got into Superman's head with a uh, knife made of uh, Krypton. And Batman basically told Superman, Adam is inside your head. 
if you don't go back into the prison, he, you know, he can kill you. Like we, he can uh, give you to, ha- he can cause you to have a seizure, a stroke, or he can just put you down for good. And Superman's like, uh, that's slow even for you, Batman. And just basically talking about like all the terrible things Batman has done. It's like, Superman, you killed a shit ton of people. You like eye lasered the shit out of whole cities. You killed Shazam by lasering his face off. You killed a bunch of other heroes. You crippled a kid because he was a fan of the Flash. And you're going to be calling Batman out on doing something? Like you have no room to talk. So yeah, there's a lot of like hypocritical shit that goes down in this series. I guess it kind of makes sense because people are always trying to find justifications for their actions even when they know they're in the wrong. But um, yeah, the series so far is really good. The art is also really well done. Who does the art? Daniel Sempiri? I don't know who that is. I'll be honest though, I don't really know like any artists or writers. The ones that I do, I don't know for good reasons. (laughs) The artwork from Daniel is really good. It's like really top notch quality. Then again, maybe it's just because I'm coming from Marvel where everything there is pretty crappy. No, no, I'm. it's not because of that. The, the artwork is really good. Like, I really like it. Uh, but yeah, the the writing from Tom, Tom Taylor. I definitely have to check his stuff out, see what else he's done. Because this is so, like, I can't stop gushing about this. This is really well done. Like, DC could have easily just, like, tossed this to, like, you know, their Z team of creatives. But no, they, like, they put time they put effort you can tell the people working on this really care about this project it really shows like it's really well done so yeah, i think i'm gonna end the video here <laughs> because otherwise i'm just gonna i'm just gonna keep gushing on it over and over again but yeah uh definitely pick up injustice 2 the series give it a read it's like you won't regret it like like i said like the characters are so fucking good plastic man i think though steals the show for me plastic man his son which was kind of surprising because the funny thing is like even when batman said that they needed plastic man's help uh, Green Lantern's reaction was like, what? Are you serious? Because I, I guess Plastic Man is like a joke when it comes to superheroes. But he, uh, so far, like, he, is, he has been hands down my favorite character in this whole series. He is so awesome. So I just want to know, like anyone out there who, who has read any stuff from Plastic Man, is there any stories you recommend? Like I want to see more with this guy. So uh, any any Plastic Man series you guys recommend I, I check out? I, like I said earlier, I heard that the... Uh, they're bringing him back for DC Rebirth, so I'm definitely going to have to keep my eyes peeled for that. So yeah, that was uh, Injustice Issue 17. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you guys all next time. Later!